This video provides the second lesson in a series on interpreting mass spectra. We will cover fragmentation methods here. The mechanisms described in this lesson were developed over several decades by Fred McLafferty and his group at Cornell. Let's start with a molecule with a heteroatom such as oxygen or nitrogen or sulfur. These atoms have lone pairs of electrons that are easily ionized, forming a molecular ion. These are odd electron ions. The free radical has a tendency to react with a neighboring atom to form a new bond. In order to supply a second electron for the bond, some other bond will have to break. Consequently, the free radical moves to the left, in this case, and is lost as a neutral fragment. The charge remains on the original site, and that is the fragment that will be observed in the mass spectrum. This type of mechanism is also referred to as alpha cleavage. Nitrogen-containing compounds such as amines are prone to alpha cleavage. Ionization occurs at the nitrogen, and a free radical attempts to form a new bond with an adjacent carbon atom. That carbon atom must provide an electron for the new bond and takes an electron out of one of the other bonds that it had. That bond breaks and the odd electron ends up on the alkyl fragment. That fragment is neutral and will not be seen in the mass spectrum. Since the charge remains on the nitrogen, we will observe that fragment in the spectrum. The bond that breaks most often is the one that leads to the loss of the largest alkyl fragment as the neutral species. Nitrogen atoms are very prone to this reaction pathway. The tendency for other radical sites to undergo this type of mechanism follows the order of nitrogen greater than sulfur, greater than oxygen, pi electrons, or alkyl radicals, which is also more probable than chlorine or bromine radicals. Let's look at an oxygen-containing molecule. A ketone will ionize leucine and electron from a non-bonding pair associated with the oxygen. The product radical tries to form a new bond between the oxygen and the adjacent carbon. That carbon must break a bond in order to form a new bond with the oxygen. As a result, an old bond breaks and the odd electron ends up on the neutral fragment and the charge remains on the oxygen atom. Once again, the alpha cleavage favors the loss of the largest alkyl fragment. Another type of mechanism originates at the charge site. This process is also known as inductive cleavage. In this case, we imagine that the charge withdraws a pair of electrons from the neighboring bond. Once again, we'll start with a molecule containing a heteroatom, but remember this is not a requirement. We could also ionize a double bond. Imagine that we lose one electron out of a non-bonding pair associated with the heteroatom. Now, the charge attracts both electrons from an adjacent bond. As a result, that bond breaks and the charge migrates to the atom where the bond broke. This charge fragment will be the one observed in the mass spectrum as a result of this pathway. Let's look at some specific molecules. Oxygen-containing compounds exhibit this sort of inductive cleavage. Here we have an ether molecule, and ionization is most likely to lead to a loss of an electron from a lone pair associated with the oxygen atom. The charge withdraws a pair of electrons from an adjacent bond. That bond breaks as a result. Since the carbon next to the oxygen lost both electrons in the process, the charge moves to the carbon atom. The fragment with the oxygen is now a neutral radical. The alkyl fragment is the one that's observed in the spectrum. The most probable bond to break will be the one that leads to the most easily ionized fragment. Here, the choice is between the ethyl group and a propyl group. The propyl group is more easily ionized because of its size. What happens when the charge site is connected to a double bond? The charge site migrates rather than breaking the double bond. Let's look at a ketone. Ionization occurs at the oxygen atom, and the charge on the atom withdraws a pair of electrons from the double bond. That moves the charge to the carbon atom. The carbon atom pulls both electrons out of a neighboring bond. That process breaks the bond and moves the charge to the alkyl fragment. 
the fragment with the oxygen atom may look a little strange here, but we may expect that the double bond will reform into a more realistic structure. Sometimes the inductive effect breaks a bond beta to the charge site. When we ionize a normal alkyl chloride, a pair of electrons is removed, not in the adjacent bond, but from a bond on the far side of the attached carbon atom. The inductive pathway also works with even electron ions, or daughter ions, produced in a For prior example, step. This ether molecule might first participate in alpha cleavage. The charge site on the oxygen atom withdraws a pair of electrons from the bond it shares with the neighboring carbon. The result is a loss of carbon monoxide, and we observe an alkyl cation again. Halogens are the most likely to cause an inductive cleavage, followed by oxygen and sulfur-containing charge sites, which in turn have much greater tendency than either nitrogen or carbon charge sites. You'll recall that molecular ions are odd electron ions. All of the mechanisms that we've discussed up to this point have produced even electron products. Mechanisms that involve breaking two or more bonds may produce odd electron ions. These mechanisms have special structural requirements and therefore are important clues to structure. Let's take a look at some of the more common mechanisms of this sort. One of these involves opening ring structures. Consider cyclohexane. Ionization will necessarily break one of the carbon-carbon bonds. If the free radical tries to form a new bond, a bond on the other side will donate an electron and break off a neutral molecule. In this case, ethylene will be the lost molecule. The other fragment retains both the charge and the radical, which now appears in a new position. Therefore, it's an odd electron ion. Something similar happens with cyclohexene and aromatic rings. Ring opening in these cases lead to two competing pathways. The ionization step removes an electron from a double bond and a radical initiates the alpha cleavage. The product still has the same mass as the original molecule, but if we let the radical form a new bond, it will break off a neutral alkene, leaving behind an odd electron ion that will show up in the spectrum. A different product can be observed if, after the ring opening process, the charge site removes a pair of electrons from a bond beta to the charge site. The resulting products are similar to those we saw before. However, this time we get the neutral diene molecule and an odd electron ion as the other half. Another important mechanism of this sort is associated with hydrogen atom migration. In particular, McLafferty rearrangements involve hydrogen ion transfer when a six-member transition state can be formed with the radical ion located on an unsaturated heteroatom. Aldehydes, ketones, esters, and carboxylic acids are examples that can exhibit McLafferty rearrangements. In this example, ionization occurs at a ketone oxygen. A hydrogen atom attached to the third carbon away from the carbonyl carbon is in the right position to come close to the free radical when the backbone of the molecule bends. See that the hydrogen atom is six atoms removed from the free radical. The hydrogen atom, a hydrogen with an electron, migrates to the oxygen and forms a new bond with a free radical. Now the free radical appears on the carbon where the hydrogen atom was originally located. Two different pathways are often observed after this point. If the radical initiates alpha cleavage, then we lose a neutral molecule and we see an odd electron ion containing the oxygen atom in the spectrum. Alternatively, the oxygen atom may withdraw an electron pair out of the double bond, moving the charge to the adjacent carbon atom. In a second inductive step, an electron pair is removed from a bond on the other side of the carbon adjacent to the charge site. Notice that we get complementary products again. The same bond is broken in both pathways, 
However, the fragments that retain the charge are complementary for the two cases. A hydrogen atom may migrate to a saturated heteroatom and lead to an odd electron product. However, it is not necessary to have a six-member transition state for this to happen. Here I'm representing an alcohol with an indefinite chain length between the radical on the oxygen atom and a migrating hydrogen atom. The radical site initiates a new bond with the transferring hydrogen atom. The radical site changes position, but the charge remains on the oxygen. The charge site now tends to withdraw an electron pair from the adjacent bond, splitting off a neutral water molecule. For example, in a primary alcohol, a nearby hydrogen atom migrates and leads to an odd electron ion after the loss of a water molecule. This sort of inductive cleavage is common following a hydrogen atom transfer when the charge site is a halogen or an oxygen atom. If the charge site is a nitrogen atom, then alpha cleavage tends to follow hydrogen rearrangement steps. Let's look at an amide, for example. Here, ionization takes place at the nitrogen atom in this simple amide. Hydrogen transfer to the nitrogen moves the free radical to the other side of the carbonyl. The free radical initiates a new bond with the carbonyl carbon, which must let go of the nitrogen atom to complete the process. As a result, we observe an odd electron ion containing nitrogen in our spectrum. So we see that an odd electron ion can explain the loss of neutral molecules and have important implications with regard to the structure of the sample molecule. But how do we recognize an, that an ion is an odd electron fragment in the spectrum? We can apply the same process we did with the molecular ion to calculate the composition of the fragment. Then we should be able to calculate the rings plus double bonds or double bond equivalents. An odd electron ion will give us an integer for this calculation. Here's a similar idea that is a lot easier to apply. Whenever we have a molecular ion with an even mass, in that case, fragments with an even mass are also odd electron ions. For example, in this spectrum, the molecular ion appears at 86 atomic mass units. There's also a tall peak at an even mass of 68. This fragment is an odd electron ion and must be the product of a mechanism that involves breaking two or more bonds. The difference in mass between the molecular ion and this odd electron ion is 18, which suggests possibly the loss of a water molecule. Next, we should consider those functional groups that tend to lose water, such as primary alcohols or phenols.